What is up guys? In this lesson, I want to go over what a syntax error is in Python and how to fix it. The first thing I want to mention is that a syntax error is produced by Python when it's translating the source code into bytecode, which means essentially we're writing what Python should do. And Python is just kind of like a translator that turns our code into something that the computer can read. So a syntax error is essentially writing something in Chinese to someone that only understands Spanish. So let's get started with the most popular examples and how to solve them. Now, the first popular example is providing a keyword such as true and trying to assign to it a value such as a string, or we can use the pass statement and assign it one, two, three, or even the if statement and assign it if. So as you can see, for all of these examples, we're getting some red underlines because we are using keywords that are reserved by Python. So this is an absolute no-go. And if we actually run the program, it's going to say syntax error cannot assign to true. That's fine, let's get rid of that. It's going to say invalid syntax because pass, of course, is not a value either. And we cannot use that. It's not going to tell us in the error log, but we're supposed to know that because it's just obvious. And the same thing goes for the if statement. It's going to give us a syntax error because we're using a keyword that just does not make sense there. Of course, we can try to get around that by adding capital letters. And now when we run the program, there's going to be no error. And we can also print it just like that. Now, moving on to the next example. For most cases, if we go ahead and create an if statement, we can go if 10 is more than five, then we're just going to print hello. If we run this, of course, it's going to print hello. But something that happens very often is that people forget to add the colon and this leads to a syntax error. And you're going to try to understand why is this invalid syntax? 10 is more than five, so it should print hello. But of course, in Python, we don't have curly brackets, which makes this a bit more confusing sometimes to remember to add the colon. But as soon as we add that, it's going to work immediately. Now, the next thing to worry about is indentation. Pretend we have, of course, this indented block. As you may remember, in Python, a block is just created by an indentation. So everything that's on this indentation will belong to this if statement. But let's go back. Now, if we go here and create a space, this is creating a new block, but that doesn't really make any sense to the compiler. So let's go ahead and type in hello too. When we try to run the program, it's going to give us an indentation error because this does not belong to any indentation. We have the main indentation, which is the first line, and creating a random block inside a random indentation will just make it impossible for the computer to understand what's going on. So you have two options here. One is to return to the main indentation, and the second option is to put it inside the block that we've created. So indentation must be consistent or you'll get this syntax error. But let's go ahead and delete that because the next example might be fairly obvious, but when you create a string, you need to make sure that the quotation marks go around the string. If you are missing a quotation mark, it's going to give us a syntax error, which just tells us that, hey, you forgot to close your quotation marks. So just remember to do that and I'll be more than happy to translate that for you. But now let's go over an error that a lot of beginners happen to encounter. And that one is instead of comparing a variable is actually assigning it in an if statement. And just to show you, if we go ahead and say, let's check if X is equal to 10, then we will print hello. We're going to get this syntax error because we used an assignment operator and not the comparison operator. The equal and the double equals are completely different. And oftentimes it's very easy to slip on the keyboard and completely miss that. But we should know that this arrow is actually pointing to something very useful. And now that we fixed it, we're going to be able to execute the program with no error. We can even change it to 12 and print hello. And here's the final case I want to cover. So let's go ahead and print something such as hello. But for some reason, we're going to insert about three parentheses at this point, it can get really hard to keep track of them. Eventually, sometimes you even have six or seven parentheses. And when we run it, we're going to get a syntax error because we're missing a parentheses. And if you read this error right here, you're probably not going to understand anything because it doesn't really tell us anything. It just tells us 
that at line three, we had a problem. But obviously we can go ahead and hover over the red and it's going to say either we're missing a comma or we're missing a parentheses. And as soon as we add that, it's going to be able to run the program. The same thing goes for lists. So if we go ahead and create a tuple, we can say hello, Mario and Luigi. So now we have a list here and we can print that list. As you can see, everything is working very nicely. But if we forget to add a parentheses, we're going to get the syntax error that we cannot print X. And again, it's not going to be that easy to spot because it's not going to tell us exactly where it went wrong. So we're going to have to hover here and it's going to say unexpected expression syntax. This is because we opened a pair of parentheses. So the compiler thinks that this parentheses pair is ending around here. It's actually thinking that we mean something more like this. And of course that doesn't make any sense. And even if we remove the print statement, it's going to say unexpected EOF while passing because we did not close the parentheses. As soon as we close it, everything's going to work just as it did before. So as you can see, syntax errors are nothing to be afraid of. They just mean that you essentially wrote something that Python does not understand. And they can easily be solved by looking at your code and just logically adding what is missing. But with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this kind of video. I really thought it would be cool to go over a lot of possible errors you might encounter in Python and to teach you how you can fix them. Because in the long run, the more errors you know how to fix, the better programmer you will become. So it's incredibly important that you encounter as many errors as possible because it just makes programming so much easier in the long run. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next lesson.